Welcome to another episode of W. Hollis Boxing. In this episode, we are going to discuss the topic of weight bullies. I hear this term a lot, and I came across this discussion in a Facebook boxing discussion group, King of the Ring Boxing Talk, shout out to them. And basically what it describes is Monster in a way coming into the ring at 137 on fight night, even though he fights at 122. So people are comparing Inoue's fight night weight to Gervonta Davis's fighting weight at the weigh-in. So right off the bat, we're comparing two different things because Gervonta Davis doesn't step off the scale and walk right into the ring. He has the opportunity to rehydrate as well. So it seems to be fairly common for fighters to rehydrate at least 15 pounds, if not 20 or more. So if Inouye is rehydrating to 137, then that would mean that Gervonta Davis is rehydrating from 135 to 150 or 155 at a minimum so right off the bat that's unbalanced but I also wanted to just discuss the topic of weight bullying because people talk about rehydrating excessively but both fighters have the same opportunity to rehydrate and so we're going to talk about that So here was my initial response for all the weight bully folks. How much do you think a fighter should be allowed to eat and drink after the weigh-in? Because my thought process is you can't really legislate what somebody eats or what they drink after they make weight legally because everyone should have the right to prepare as they see fit both fighters have the same opportunity i step on the scale you step on the scale now if we want to talk about rehydration clauses i'm not opposed to that if there was a standard 15 pound rehydration clause on the morning of the fight that might curb the issue a little bit but ultimately fighters need to be allowed to prepare however they see fit as long as you made weight legal Legally, with no PEDs or any illegal supplements. That's my thought on that. And this person responded, they said, okay, if you're fighting any weight, I believe you should only be able to rehydrate to seven pounds above. That's no fair. You fight 140 and come in 160. Make it make sense. Here's how I'll make it make sense. If both fighters have the same opportunity, then all is fair. I should not be able to dictate to you that you can only have two slices of bread and three cups of water between the weigh-in and when you fight. And here's the flip side of it. Let's say that you go out of your way to gain a competitive advantage. If you drain yourself to an unhealthy weight to where you can't compete effectively, then on the flip side, you're going to be at a disadvantage. So that's where it's up to the fighter and It's extremely difficult to legislate what you eat and drink after the weigh-in because you have done your part. Now, I will say this. One change that could help to address the issue would be to have the weigh-in no more than 24 hours before fight night. Because a lot of times I've seen that it's like 36 plus hours before and then there's a ceremonial weigh-in. So one way that we can curb the issue is to have it be 24 hours instead. So you make weight, you make weight legally, but it has to be within 24 hours of the fight. Maybe no more than 30 hours before the fight. That would actually address the issue. It's not a perfect solution. However, it would be able to curb the issue somewhat. Now, another aspect in which I can relate, even though I'm not a professional boxer, I do compete in master's track meets, and I like to go on long runs to slim down. So I might throw on a sauna suit and go on a five-mile jog so that I can drop some water weight. I've lost five to seven pounds on those runs before. So if someone were to tell me that I can't properly rehydrate, then that would put me at a disadvantage if I was supposed to step into the ring. But if we are going to talk about weight bullying, then I want to go back to the Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia issue, because there are people who were so happy to see Devin Haney lose that they don't care what Ryan Garcia did to get the win. If you agree to a weight and then you choose to not make the weight just because you have deep pockets, I would argue that that's weight bullying. So going back to my running example, let's say we're both three pounds away from making weight. 
we think that we're going to make the weight legally like we agreed. So I go on my long run to get down to that weight limit and you choose not to. I would argue that that's weight bullying. And even if I rehydrate, the fact remains that I did the work to lose that weight and you didn't. But we'll talk about more of that in the next episode. Y'all take it easy. Hey.